Welcome to this edition of Duffy Doings, our show about issues related to health care and homelessness on Cape Cod and what's going on at Duffy Health Center. I'm Heidi Nelson and I serve as the CEO at Duffy. Today we're going to be talking about the Homeless Persons Memorial Day, which is coming up soon. And with me I have two guests today, Rick Smiley, who is an uh, outreach case manager at Duffy Health Center. Hi, Rick. Good morning, Heidi. And Derek Bussier, and Derek works for Housing Assistance Corporation and also does street outreach on behalf of, of HACC. Good morning. Welcome, Derek. Good to have you here. So um, one of the things that I say often is that poor health causes homelessness and homelessness causes poor health. Both of those things are true. Um, we've had uh, many studies over the years from different cities that have looked at death certificates and death rates and they have shown higher death rates for people who are homeless than people who are not homeless. In the past those studies would show that homeless people um, would die more frequently from infectious diseases such as HIV, um, violence, our folks are subject to a lot of violence on the streets, and untreated chronic conditions. However, uh, recently, a few years ago, Boston Healthcare for the Homeless updated their homeless death studies in 2013, found that the leading cause of, cause of death was overdose, um, which is probably not a surprise uh, to both of you. But we also have um, the issues of just living the lifestyle and living outside and um, higher rates of smoking, um, more heart disease, more cancer as a result of that. So all of these things come together to create higher death rates uh, for people who are homeless. So in order to highlight uh, the fatal consequences of homelessness, the National Health Care for the Homeless Council, and Duffy is a member of that organization, and the National Coalition for the Homeless declare December 21st every year, which is the longest night of the year as Homeless Persons Memorial Day and across the country communities come together to mourn those who have lost their lives in the past year due to homelessness. So, so let's start with the, talking about our local event. This year uh, Homeless Persons Memorial Day will take place on Thursday, December 21st, which is the winter solstice, um, the longest night of the year. Um, the event will be at the Federated Church as it always has been. In past years we've started on the Village Green in Hyannis and then marched over to the church. This year we're going to gather on the front steps of the church at 5 o'clock on December 31st and then we'll, uh, I'm sorry, 21st, um, and then we'll go into the church for the service which um, should take no longer than 45 to, to 60 minutes. So um, Rick, uh, can you tell me about how many people we're going to memorialize this year? At this moment, the number is 25. Mm -hmm. um, that will fluctuate probably up or down a few people between now and uh, next week. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's at the moment 25. So, so Duffy sort of is the central point of collecting the data, but all the organizations that work with the homeless feed into that number, yes. right? And, and right. how do we think about that number? Who, who's included in that number? Anybody that's been homeless, um, that has come on our radar for various reasons, um, the, you know, the, the folks, we get the information from Cape Cod Hospital, the police, uh, all the other organizations. Derek might hear about somebody that maybe was homeless for years that gets placed but still ends up passing away anyways due to their health concerns, just it was too late mm -hmm. to get them in somewhere. So we get them from a number of different organizations. Right. So you were just talking before the show about how you get together with the other outreach workers and kind of talk about the people. Yeah, so what we do is um, we try to, we know the circumstances aren't good. I mean, that's why, you know, we're, we're memorializing everything. And, and what we want to do is we want to make sure that that memory um, you know, is, is left with the people, uh, you know, in a positive light, 
that's that's one of the, the big things that we try to do. So we sit around uh, a few other outreach workers and try to think of their lives and how they would like uh, to be remembered uh, in that short short period at the church when we're able to uh, remember them. So, so everybody's name is mentioned, uh, candles are lit, and uh, you say a few words about each person. That's correct, That yes. passed away, yeah. that's, um, that's the format. You know, it's interesting, um, and what, what we want to do is talk about successes that they had in their lives, too. We don't want to remember people for their, for their failures. But one of the things that I find really fascinating over the years is that um, people can have been homeless for many years, and then at some point they decide that they want to come inside and that they want housing. They finally accept housing. And then they pass away within mm -hmm. six to 12 months of when they accepted housing. And the, the way that I've learned to think about that is that maybe somehow they knew, right, mm -hmm. that they were coming to the end of their lives and they didn't want to die on the street. They wanted to die with, with dignity in a home. Mm -hmm. um, is that part of your experience as well? Oh, go ahead. I, I, you know, I, I think that's that's pretty pretty telling we we see that a lot um, you know being able to give individuals the opportunity to get services and surrounding them uh, with services the most successful people that I usually see um, are those that are that are ready mm -hmm. they're just one day and it and it happens like that one day um, you know they come to you and they say what can I do? I'm all on board. Let's get a roof over yeah. my head and, and let's get engaged with services. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty good perspective, you know, to yeah. maybe, maybe at some points they, they are ready, you know, and, and, you know, they feel that, you know, coming to the end of, of their lifespan and, you know, they want to get that, that roof over their head. But, um, you know, moving, moving forward, I, I think it's a, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's just, it's pretty telling, you know, mm -hmm. when, when that happens. Mm -hmm. Well, and of course you have people um, over and over again who make the decision uh, to, to get housed and they live for many years <laughs> housed. Yeah. They change everything around and uh, those must be great days for you guys because I can imagine it's, it's kind of tough out there sometimes, yeah. right? Few and far in between, <laughs> so when we get them, you know, we hold on to them. Right, you know, It's right. a good thing. You right. Know. Rick, do you want to tell a story about one of the folks that passed away this year? Well, there was a gentleman that I've had literally known since my early days of working the Noah Shelter back in the late 80s. And he had actually had, at one point in time, a very long, successful run of sobriety. Um, his primary problem was his alcoholism. He gets sober at one point, and he actually started his own little business, uh, got to the point in time that he was actually able to purchase uh, a brand new Mustang and saw him off the streets um, and then life threw him a curveball after about eight or nine years of his sobriety uh, that he just went back to the bottle mm -hmm. and he then spent the last 10 years uh, on and off the streets um, for an extended period of time ignoring his uh, health issues and um, though he was he it was one of those folks that you actually decided he decided he knew he was dying he knew he didn't have long on this world and instead of dying on the streets and you know he was a great one for when he was on the streets finding these little places to hole up um, uh -huh. he was very good at that uh, mm -hmm. sometimes though because of his alcoholism he literally would just pass out somewhere mm -hmm. um, and he decided to do something about it and he was actually in a nursing home they did try to help him, but his, his condition was too far gone. Mm -hmm. uh, so the last few months of his life, he was actually being well cared for. Mm -hmm. um, but he was one of those guys that for years, um, you know, he was on and off the streets and you could tell just by looking at him when he was sober. And when he was sober, he, like when he bought that ni nice Mustang, one of the things he used to do was he used to drop, uh, pick up stuff and drop it off at, um, programs like mm -hmm. the old pilot house mm -hmm. um, I remember one night distinctly he came by and he had two large cheese pizzas and brought them in for the guys <laughs> and dropped them off you uh -huh. know he just he had just gotten paid from one of his big you know contracts and uh -huh. you know he was spreading the wealth around and he knew that the people in the pilot house would appreciate a 
a couple of nice cheese pieces and just that's what he did. Right, right. <laughs> well, what about you, Derek? What story can you share? <coughs> Uh, I remember um, when I was a uh, housing specialist over at uh, the old NOAA shelter, um, we had an individual that would, would come in and he would be interested in getting permanent housing one way or another. So we'd sit down, we'd fill out housing applications, look for independent housing solutions. Um, and when we felt like we were making progress, I wouldn't see him for 15 to 20 days. Uh -huh. So. <laughs> You know, you're looking around for him and all of a sudden he pops back up. So um, as I came to find out, this was a pattern for this individual. Um, he would OD uh, in the community and then he would go to treatment. Then mm -hmm. he would come back and this cycle would, would continue. So this past year, uh, I saw him at a campsite um, and he was really interested in getting off Cape, going to the you know, New Bedford Fall River area. So we hopped on getting uh, some applications done. Um, and come to find out a short while later, uh, found out that he OD'd and died in oh. an apartment. Oh dear. Um, yeah, and you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things where uh, we see this the most often. We mm -hmm. see this cycle happen. People get the treatment um, and they're very motivated. As soon as they get out, they're motivated to do something. So that's when we try to really grab them and, 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 and uh, assist them into whatever they need. Unfortunately, being in the community sometimes, they go back to old habits, they go back mm -hmm. to old friends, the old haunts, and unfortunately, this time it, it caught up with them. Yeah, you know, I think it's important to emphasize uh, for our audience that, um, you know, substance abuse and uh, mental illness are, are problems at, at all economic levels of, of our society. Mm -hmm. I personally have mental illness in my family and addiction um, in my family, but because we are able to, we have the resources um, to help each other, mm. we fortunately at this point, nobody has fallen into homelessness. But what happens often for people at the lower strata of the economic society, they just don't have the resources to help each other out when they spin out of control, you know, for, for whatever reason. So um, I, I like to say that, you know, people on the left think that um, homelessness is a, an affordable housing and a low-wage job problem. People on the right like to think it's all about mental health and, and substance abuse when we know that it's really often a combination of, of both of those things. And, and when um, problems, when you hit a rough patch, in life, if you don't have friends or family that can help you out, um, homelessness can often be the result of that, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so you've talked about addiction and, and you know what I talked about earlier with the Boston study that talked about overdose being being a big issue. Um, what are some of the other health concerns that you see with the clients, in particular the people who have passed away, but you both work with people, talk about what you do, you go out into the woods, right, with yeah. the police, with the community impact unit, um, you see people tucked in doorways on, on Main Street. Um, what are some of the common health concerns that you see with your clients, Derek? Yeah, I mean, health concerns, uh, just a, a range of mental health issues, um, you know, and you have things hygiene hygiene is always mm -hmm. a, a big one mm -hmm. um, but you know for for reasons leading leading to or you know uh, death really is the uh, opiates are, are big um, mm -hmm. especially with the fentanyl um, mm -hmm. out there and then and then uh, alcohol abuse I think you yeah. know when Rick Rick was just talking about that um, those are the the two main things that that we hear of and we see most often um, but like you were alluding to there are so many um, things that lead up to that and one of the big things the mental health I mean we have people that are self-medicating mm -hmm. a lot um, so they're trying to to compensate for for what's going on um, and it becomes too much mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. eventually you know especially with the opiates um, we, we see you know death mm -hmm. more often than not mm -hmm. what about you Rick? Oh the thing about this how difficult it is for a person who has a stable environment um, you take your medication. Mm -hmm. um, try to take an antibiotic three times a day at certain times and hours. We're just being able to get the the timing down. 
the, mm -hmm. the water sometimes mm -hmm. to drink. Um, and those are big pills. You right. need and a you know, big glass and, of water and, and, to take you know, your so antibiotics. If a person is homeless, right. it makes it that much more difficult for them right. to stay on that regimen. And antibiotics are a perfect example. If you don't take them right and finish them out, I mean, if you lose them and you're only two thirds of the way through, a lot of times it, they don't do the job. And that's just a quick example. If someone's on a medication for something right. like that, it's, it's that much more difficult. You hear people who have houses and apartments talk about how difficult it is to properly take these things. Life gets in the way. And if mm -hmm. you're on the streets and you lose them or you forget and things are happening, and then of course with the substance abuse on top of it, a lot of those things they do not take with alcohol. Well, if the guy's out you know, thinking, oh, I'm just not gonna drink vodka, I'll have beer instead, Right. It still doesn't work. Right, right. You know, and just the follow up. Right. It's interesting what you say about um, hypertension, for example. Yeah. Our goal at Duffy is for our, we have about 750 patients with a hypertension diagnosis, and our goal is for 71% of them to have their blood pressure within normal limits through the services that we provide, and we're at about 58%. So we're falling short of our goal. However, nationally, amongst the U.S. population, everybody, um, success with hypertension is about 50%. Um, so we do a better job um, than the general public, but we're still not really where, where we want to be. And there are a thousand other examples of um, diabetes, you know, when you think of people who are insulin dependent, for example, and right. your insulin has to be refrigerated, or, um, you know, our women's health exams that we try to get our women in for preventive visits are extremely difficult because there's nothing wrong with you. You know, why, why, do, you, why do you want me to go to the doctor? I don't need to go to the doctor. I feel fine. So, um, freezing to death, um, is that is there such a thing? Does, has that happened in your knowledge over the years? Over the years, yes. Um, I, I haven't seen it within the, the past few years, but yeah, I've, I've mm -hmm. seen it and like you've been doing it a it, little, it, little yeah. while. It, um, <laughs> it does occur, um, but I like to think due to the people that are out there, um, those of us that do the outreach, a lot of the folks may die outdoors, but is freezing the number one reason, or is the alcoholism or the drug abuse or mm -hmm. the mental illness mm -hmm. the real reason why they died? Mm -hmm. um, uh, Derek and I were discussing a couple of people that had passed away um, out in the cold, and but they were also intoxicated. Um, try to tell a lot of these guys that alcohol lowers your body temperature and that it, it actually doesn't increase it like the old myth, and it, you know, they, they don't believe you. You know, some of them just don't flat out believe you. They think if they're drinking their alcohol, they're getting their, their, the antifreeze that they need when mm -hmm. it's actually hurting them. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it just compounds the problem. Mm -hmm. When I know that we're, we're coming up on the winter storm season as yeah. well, and, and uh, we, we talked about how Noah Shelter is now called St. Joseph House, St. Joseph's House, and is operated now by the um, Catholic Social Services of the New Bedford Archdiocese or Fall River. Um, Archdiocese, but um, I know that you all do a really special push when you know that a storm is coming or that temps are going to go very, very low. Even those really hardcore folks um, who are in the woods, you try to get them uh, to come in. We can get them maybe in the lobby of the shelter at least, so they so they don't uh, end up. Yeah, and we, you out know, in the cold. yeah. I mean, we, you know, we, we hope we don't see uh, we don't see a big storm this this winter. Um, <laughs> but uh, but um, yeah, I mean, I remember uh, there was a there was a really bad rainstorm uh, either last month or the month before, mm -hmm. um, and it and it was not stopping. And uh, Rick and I were out yeah. trying to gather the troops just to just to get out because I mean, you know, rain presents a problem. Freezing temperatures presents a whole other ball game. So, right. so yeah, we, we do try to uh, as much as we can to get out there to the camps, the streets, and push people towards the shelter so they at least have a roof over their head. Right, right. So again, we're here to talk about uh, Homeless Persons Memorial Day, which this year will be on Thursday, December twenty first, at five p.m. at the Federated Church, which is located on Main Street in Hyannis. So the church is a real um, uh, 
kind of a place for engagement uh, for the work that you guys do. Rick, talk about the coffee house and what is the coffee house? The coffee house. Um, I believe it was started actually by Vinfin. It was. The was. First mm -hmm. Group to do that, but a lot of us show up there. It's a gathering spot. Um, they always have coffee. They sometimes have uh, pastries that they or donuts or whatever for the folks to snack on. It's just a way to get people indoors. Um, on days it rains, it's obviously usually a lot more crowded than other days. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it allows us to find the folks, like Derek was talking about, the man that disappears on a regular basis. Well, if we show up at the coffee hour, and sometimes the people come to us. Mm -hmm. You know, they come in for the cup of coffee, and then we're allowed able to engage them. And the Federated Church, um, it's one, in one of their smaller halls. They have a smaller hall, Baldwin Hall. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not even sure what the big one in the back is called. But I they think have it's called the Fellowship Hall. The I Fellowship think that's the name Hall. Of they it, have, yeah. And Baldwin Hall is where we hold the, the coffee hour. And the, oh, okay. The, it's on, right on Main Street. Mm -hmm. um, and the, it's just a gathering spot, a great way to make connections with people. Yeah. Um, in kind of a normalized yep. setting, too. You know, it's right. not at the shelter, it's at, um, it's at a different location. There's also something we call the giveaway, um, but you want to talk about what that is? Yeah, I mean, the giveaway, so it's a once monthly um, um, uh, clothing drive, if you will, put on um, by some of the church uh, members. Izzy is, mm -hmm, is, mm -hmm. is uh, very famous From for that. From Harwich uh, Church, Pilgrim Church, yep, which yep. is also my church. Yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> True confessions. <Sure. laughs> um, and, uh, and, and it's great. It's, again, it goes along the line with the, with the coffee hour where it's a, a non-threatening environment that people can come in. Um, they can gather some of the, the belongings that they need, toiletries, clothes, um, and really organize. They have it by sizes and, and, uh, and everything else, shirts, pants, men's and, and uh, women's clothing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the coffee hour definitely serves as a, uh, a very good non-threatening environment for people to either, you know, sit and, uh, and enjoy a cup of coffee or, like Rick said, engage in services. Right, yeah. right, right. And uh, you've been going to the Fellowship Kitchen. Um, talk about involvement of the churches. This was quite an involvement. I think they raised... Yeah. 300000 or some huge amount of money to upgrade their kitchen so they could feed they, folks. They have a real industrial kitchen with yeah. a real chef overseeing the menu. Um, they serve free meals Monday, Wednesday, and Friday nights. Um, I'm usually there on Wednesday nights. Sometimes I go on Friday nights also. Uh, they have, um, it's another great place, and it's even, a lot of the folks I see there, um, I don't see them anywhere else because some of these guys are actually working poor. Mm -hmm. um, quick example, there is a man who, probably due to his mental illness, doesn't want to go to the shelter, but he has a part-time job, and he doesn't make quite enough money to get in somewhere. I believe he's even talked to Derek. I think I say, oh, saw them talking one time about it, but the housing part, he comes in for meals, and it gives me a chance to engage with him, encourage him to stop into Duffy to see his medical health provider. Mm -hmm. um, and there, there's about 60 people in the other night when I was there. Um, you know, we're at the coffee hour, you might see 20, 25 some days. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a larger target audience, so mm -hmm. to speak, of people that we can just try to help and get them off the streets. Mm -hmm. Um, and just another place for engagement. Right, well, and it's a, it's a wonderful program with a lot of volunteers uh, that participate, including you. Yeah. I think you also, you work there, but you also volunteer there, Yeah, don't my you? church also goes there one night a month, so uh, that's why I'm there sometimes on Fridays. It's all church volunteers, too. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the head chef, the guy Tom, uh, does a great job, and he directs everybody, but the, a lot of the work is done by the volunteers that show mm -hmm. up and churches from literally all over the Cape mm -hmm. come down and I've, I've met people I think from Orleans, Chatham, uh, Mashpee, you know, so there's a wide variety of uh, churches involved. That's wonderful. Now you've got a background uh, as the housing specialist mm -hmm. um, for HACC and so that's a great background to have uh, to become an outreach worker because mm -hmm. you know all, all the resources. Are, are people more interested in housing in the wintertime months? Do we see less people on the street? Yeah, I think it's a um, it's an interesting thing Cape Cod. Uh, you know, summertime brings good weather and 
more or less there's, there's not really a, a care in the world, let's say, and then when the, when the colder weather hits around fall time, you see people getting a little more anxious and you see the, uh, the alarms start to go off. So that's when we get a lot of individuals, the coffee house being one yeah. of the places uh, where they want to come in and, and get engaged. How can I get housing? Uh, what applications can I fill out? Um, and that's when we start seeing the immediate need uh, that, that people have. And, uh, sure. Sure. We like to work, if, if possible, we want individuals starting to fill out that paperwork in the springtime, summertime, so by winter, you know, there's a better chance of, of housing right. opening up. But um, yeah, we definitely see a, a need increase right. in, the, in the winter. Right. Well, that's, uh, believe it or not, that's all the time that, that we have this morning. Thank you both so much. Derek Buss here from Housing Assistance Corporation and Rick Smiley. Uh, from Duffy Health Center. Again, Homeless Persons Memorial Day 2017 will take place on Thursday, December 21st, gathering at the Federated Church on Main Street in Hyannis at 5 o'clock p.m. That's it for this edition of Duffy Doings. Join us next time. Thank you.